I'll go ahead and introduce uh, Jen and Jessica. Very proud of my colleagues. Again, we've seen what an expert that Daniel is. Jen uh, is really one of the key. She is the vice president of general manager at Open Source Integrators, but that does not in any way describe how critical and important her function is uh, as kind of the, she's been with the company for really the, since almost the inception of it, really uh, over the last seven years and been a key pro part of the company earning the Odoo Best Partner in North America in 2013 when she joined and then last year in 2019 and 2020. Jen oversees a lot of the process, the project management, uh, the, just the general management of the firm is incredibly process oriented, well trained, uh, has a, a master's of business administration from the University of Redlands. And also more than that though, just has a personality of positivity and optimism and just can push through to the finish line in a way that all of us that have worked on IT projects knows that there's a lag of enthusiasm at some point and you just need a coach and a cheerleader to jump in there and, and sometimes put the team on their shoulders and carry them over the finish line. And that is the kind of person that Jen Campbell is. And Jessica Novella joined uh, Open Source Integrators as a project manager and business consultant about a year and a half ago. Um, prior to that, both Jen and Jessica had worked at a very large billion dollar software company called ESRI, E-S-R-I, in Redlands, California. That's one of the largest geoanalytics, geospatial uh, information solutions in, in, in the world uh, for governments and for private. And so they had both been project managers there and had worked together and we were grateful that we could somehow poach Jessica to join the team. And Jessica has just proven to be astonishing also in her work ethic and her organizational skills and communication skills. And as we know, there are many more um, male uh, people, you know, men in, in uh, technology than there are women. And, and that is true at Odoo as well. So we're really excited to hear from them about the women of Odoo and their adventure in the Odoo journey. I want to remind everybody that um, if those of you are in Latin America or here in the Western time zones, please just go ahead and stay with us. We're going to have this presentation and a final presentation from Wolfgang Hall. And when you have questions, please just go ahead and Zoom and you can post them in the Q&A uh, field down below or in the chat window, either one of those. And we'll go ahead and read those to Jessica and to Jen when the choice arises. Or you can also on the tracks to of Discord post the question there. So. We'll turn it over to Jen and Jessica. Looking forward to your presentation. Thanks, Rich. Oh, thanks, Rich. <laughs> I appreciate the, the glowing introduction there. <laughs> so um, I went ahead and hit our intro slide since that <laughs> covered a lot of detail. Um, let me go ahead and, and present. Let's see. I think I might need a reminder on where the present screen is on. I think it's in the middle of the screen. Do you see a green button that says uh -huh. share screen? Thank you very much. Okay, sure. Okay. One second. Uh, I think I might need to take one quick break. I will be right back. Sorry about that. That's okay. Uh, no problem, Je Jen. No problem. Thanks for coming back to us. Jessica, how are you doing? I don't get a chance to work with Jessica very much anymore because she's heads down on some projects where it's 24-7, 365, <laughs> and there's no time for water cooler chit-chat. So it's... Uh, yeah, doing well. I'm actually heading there right after this presentation. So <laughs> oh, good. <laughs> continual busyness, but it's good. Yeah, it's very yeah. Good. It's, yeah, at least it's a place where you can have a good happy hour. <laughs> so <laughs> <Yeah>. speak. <laughs> yes. That's, that's crazy. So um, while we're waiting for that, uh, Jessica, well, uh, as you got ramped up into Odoo, you came on board and very quickly was involved in requirements gathering workshops and, um, and, and you know, as really assimilated into some project management responsibilities very quickly, much more quickly, I think, than we would like of giving you a little bit longer to ramp up. <laughs> what were some of the, the most challenging things that you had in terms of learning, learning Odoo and being able to, you know, deliver those projects the way you have? Um, I mean, I think the flexibility of Odoo is amazing, but once you have the flexibility, it's also the challenges of understanding how that flexibility then aligns with business requirements. So understanding that it's humans at the end of the day, managing the system. And I think that that's the biggest part. Um, there's always a solution technically, but understanding how people are actually leveraging the system and working through their workflows 
and making sure that it works for people and sure. having that change kind management. of exactly change management is huge sweet and we got jen back and we've got our slides yeah. up jen we can see your slides so please well. oh very good right. and you can hear me now yeah, so it's all right wouldn't be a a, a perfect uh, presentation without some kind of technical glitch so appreciate <laughs> the patience there um, so yeah, I you know I started my career actually in the graphic design space, believe it or not, many years ago. Um, but when I was first starting, you know, I always had an interest in technology, and I just remember that uh, back in my school days, that um, I did I did minor in computer science because of that interest, and you know there was a um, there was a women in computer science group that, you know, my time participating with that group always kind of stuck with me. And at the time I was kind of like, why, I wonder why we're kind of highlighting women. I mean, I mean, I did look around me and there, it was a very small percentage of, you know, the, the classmates that were women versus men. Um, but I didn't really think much of it. I think because I never, you know, having, I had a, was blessed with a, a strong, um, you know, kind of philosophy growing up that you can do anything, you know, it doesn't matter. Like I kind of didn't even think about gender. Um, but I did notice that when I was in school. Um, and so after school though, I, I did move on to, um, you know, do spend some time in the uh, graphic design space, but pretty quickly moved back into uh, IT and managing projects. And Interestingly, this, this, what I learned with that transition uh, just surprised me more, just big surprise. Moving into the IT space, doing project management, participating in building software in the real world, not just in school, I found that to be a lot more creative than graphic design. I mean, it, when I made that switch, it's like it unlocked this this creative side of me that had been dying to be expressed for years. And that really, really surprised me. Um, when I switched over, when I finally joined the Odoo community um, seven years ago, the thing that I noticed was that there's, there's more women in Odoo area than some of the other IT spaces. And I found this to be a really interesting observation. So, so through that, what, when, you know, Jessica and I kind of had this, this crazy idea of, of let's talk through this a bit today. Um, what, what I really learned is that there's something special about open source, about the community and how women can really thrive. So, you know, we kind of went through some analysis here to, you know, seeing some uh, like statistics around women in IT space, seeing, hearing some of the stories of the women in Odoo and, and seeing their career progression, but also pondering this, yeah, looking for this trend and explanations around, well, is there something special about the community? Is there something special about Odoo where women tend to click more and maybe are realizing you know, having that opportunity to explore that, that creative space more than in other IT realms. So through this process, you know, I, I, you know, when we get, we'll walk you through some of what we learned, but fundamentally, we have a real opportunity here in the Odoo world. I, I you know, OSI in general, we have this vision that open source is the future and it enables businesses to grow into who they want to be. It unlocks potential. It, it opens doors for what you can do with technology. I think in a parallel way, it's, it's opening doors for women and this ability to express themselves creatively and really leverage our strengths more than we even expected. So I, we, I truly think there's something there with, with open source community and women kind of being this, this click and thing and, space where it's all kind of gelling together. So we are going to walk you through some of the examples of what we learned. We are going to go through some ideas of how can we use this opportunity, come together as a community 
and and kind of push this right so take the spark and really write it through and make this shared vision a reality where women truly understand that how much they can reach their potential in it space not just because they you know oh you're one of the nerdy <laughs> the gals that likes to sit there and code it's not a you know it's not about that that's not what the daily life is in technology the daily life is exploring new worlds it's it's going into realms of business that have never been built before so you know there's so much more than i think women early in their careers realize that's out there in the it space and i think that oh that open source community and Odoo being kind of the central hub of that has is such a strong opportunity to to be this kind of guiding light and be a leader in the IT space on a whole to make this work and really bring women more into IT in general and then the whole um, industry can can really take off even more. So that's the vision. The this is a slide that, um, <laughs> that Greg put together, but I, I I feel like it's very very pertinent to what we're talking about today because the first step is really to understand that where where our work and where our organizations our daily actions have influence. Because, you, it, you know, when you wake up in the morning and you, you open your computer and you start working through your to-do list, sometimes it can, especially nowadays, where most of us are from home, it feels a little um, compartmentalized. And I, I think sometimes we forget to, to step back and really ask ourselves, well, how, who are we influencing with our daily work? And it, if, you, if you really start to break this down, it's a vast array of organizations and people. I mean, and, and I think the OCA, that that's where you can, like if, if you were to really look at all the networking connections within the OCA organization itself, you, you can start to see the application of this diagram, like all the, the hundreds of thousands of millions of connections are all there. And it comes down to this. So you, Every single day, the actions you take, the work you do, the people you reach out to, how you present yourself, how you present your work, how you present your approach to solving problems, it affects every single one of these nodes. So just, just I mean, looking through this, your customers, your competitors, every single organization you interact with is going to be influenced. Of particular interest, where I think that you know, if we ask ourselves back to this idea of the guiding light, where can we sort of focus some of our energies and push push this idea of bringing more women into the IT space? Where I see a real potential there is in the uh, community schools area and, and the OCA too, that, that community, open source community. Those are spaces where they're kind of, it, it's networking is the foundational hub of how they operate. So naturally, that's where you can look for opportunities to reach out to women, to make those connections, to start to break through barriers and, and bring a true perception of what our daily life is like in this space. Because it's not just staring at code. <laughs> it's not just, stare. I mean, yes, there's a lot of screen time, but there's so much more. There's building businesses. There's building brand new solutions to business problems and and enabling enabling new industries to, to be created so i mean this is the the vision of the reality of our day-to-day -day work that somehow we have got to communicate that to those community areas and so to inspire them to understand what potential is here and how in a very impactful way we can apply our creativity that just is naturally. And Jen, I just wanted to add something that we had talked about too, is the power of diversity in communities. And so allowing, particularly as Rich and Jen have already mentioned, the focus of a particular gender or that 
introduction of more women into the workforce allows that diversity and a greater impact of the broader community in all of those spaces that Jen was mentioning. Yeah, excellent point, Jessica. I, I, again, I think what open source, especially at Odoo, has demonstrated over the years is that diversity is what makes us stronger. It's, it's been fascinating to watch Odoo mature over time since they started in Europe and then had to adapt to US standards. That's a very different model. But what, why Odoo is thriving so well, I think, is that diversity that, you know, that sort of starting roots but then going all over the world. And again, having such a strong participation from women in the space, absolutely, that diversity drives it. So just a couple of, of interesting statistics that, that th this is on our website too, the OSI website, but really there, when you look at numbers in terms of women graduating with bachelor's degrees, women in the professional space, that starts to feel balanced. But, but there's something about, particularly with computing and IT space and management space, that the numbers aren't balancing yet. And you can kind of see that coming through with these points. Look at the CS degrees at 19% and the, the CS recipients over time since 1985, it's actually gone down. My, my root cause analysis around this is again, the misconception of what the potential in the IT space really is. And how well the requirements of the job actually meet up with the, some of the foundational personality traits that are wired into a lot of women. And of course, you know, what, when we talk about personality traits, it's never black and white. Like, of course, you know, you're going to see strengths and weaknesses in any, any individual and everyone's different. But I do think there are some things that are wired into a larger portion of women, such as just this a strong ability to nurture relationships, to be very detail oriented, to be very thoughtful and careful about decisions that are being made. And these types of personality traits, while they can sometimes be overlooked or overpowered, when they're, when they're nurtured and allowed to thrive, businesses thrive. So this is one of the things that I think we have to, you know, when, when we're interacting with the community and, and thinking about how can we kind of allow women to grow into what, what, they, what they have inside, like let that flourish. We have to kind of understand that some of these personality traits, although they might feel softer sometimes, they're actually exceptionally powerful if we let them grow and really see where, where they lead us and what they can turn into in the IT workspace. All right, so I think that leads well into some examples that we've kind of seen here at OSI. And I think as Jen mentioned, you know, the flexibility and the um, creativity that the OCA allows in open source allows kind of is the foundation I feel like that we have at OSI. So this is an internal example of something that I dealt with earlier this year. I identified sort of a challenge with a colleague and I came up with an initial plan of how to address that. And because I feel very confident in the leadership that Jen provides, her and I worked together and I laid out my plan. She provided some coaching back and like, have you thought about these things? And that really allowed me to then try out the plan, even though it was extremely uncomfortable for me in the moment, I was able to grow through that. And that effort didn't exactly work out <laughs> and it needed to be escalated. So then went back to Jen for some feedback and Jen then took it upon herself to get some additional coaching from our leader of, I would say she's more of a cultural leader in the organization and helped us to create and navigate a solution that 
allowed for true growth, I think, in all of us in allowing for mentorship, but also allowing me as an individual to grow and to take steps that I maybe wouldn't have done in another scenario. And really the foundation of trust between all of us. And so that like circle and community of women, that team and foundation that we've created at OSI, I think is extremely powerful. As Jen was saying, it's not all black and white about the strengths that women have, but that kind of ability to want to care and nurture for the care and nurture the team and the community, I felt really strongly in this scenario. And so wanted to share this as a way to maybe help to think about what, who are the women in your organization who can help to lead and grow and mentor more people? Because I know Jen doesn't just mentor me, it's our whole entire team, but she brings that nurturing and also that um, ability to grow and try and fail and that being okay, then that's a learning opportunity that we have. And I think into the sort of same foundation, that trust in developing relationships, I've also seen really powerful with the clients. So uh, we have, uh, I've worked with a client for about a year now. And we started with this project where we were mainly working with one individual. And as we know, a project is much more successful when there's a team around it. So we were very diligent in creating relationships beyond that individual stakeholder and understanding who else is involved and getting to know people. That allowed us to expand our role within the project. So we are no longer just seen as technology implementers, which maybe that would have been the original view. We're really part of their business consultation and we are a part of their team now and they trust us. And that then allowed for us to understand, Jen, if you can, I put a little bit of animation in here uh, to understand their key concerns around leveraging some of the existing OCA modules. They had a, a hesitancy to not own their own development. And through understanding those key concerns, we were able to present existing modules and present the business benefits for leveraging something that's already in the community and that allows them to spend less time developing something that already exists and more time on things that they would really need so that kind of relationship allowed for growth in their business but also for the OCA and open source so those foundational relationships I think also as Jen was mentioning the creative problem solving is the most interesting part. The technology is very cool, but it's really how we leverage that technology to help people empower their businesses, become more successful. I mean, it's, at the end of the day, they're the ones who are impacted by this. So I think that, that that diversity of the community, that continual problem solving that we strive to have at OSI, but also I think tendency of women to want to nurture and care for all of the relationships that we have, I think has allowed us to be much more successful in that project. Thanks, Jessica. Really awesome examples. Um, I, I've been with you on most of that uh, ride. So I, I want to, yeah, it, the, the, the collegial relationship that I think we got to exercise through both the examples you gave really was a great, a great just story about how, you know, as a, a few of us women really supported each other, saw our, leveraged each other's strengths, reached out to each other where we knew we could grow some more. And everyone in that situation, our clients, our entire organization, and then of course us, we all were stronger as a result of, of all of that. So just a little bit more on other space, other areas within Odoo that we've seen some really strong some really strong women participation. Interestingly, OSI has had participation in the tech space um, through family <laughs> history for over 50 years. And it actually started with um, Greg's mom, <laughs> who was self-taught in the IT space. And that was, you know, she really pushed him and the rest of his family. Um, and he grew from that. She 
grew from that. So even back, you know, last century, mid last century, it's been, it, you know, kind of wired into who we are. And then of course it's shown through, um, Jessica gave some of her stories, uh, Cindy, Serena and Rhonda, some of the key participants in OSI uh, are growing every single day. They inspire me every single day. So it, again, just seeing the participation is pretty amazing. Some business owners I got to speak to uh, within the OD space, Dara Shaw and Anna Girarsti. She, both of those women built their own company and are thriving within the OD space, pushing the technology, supporting their customers in really successful ways. So that they've been inspirations for me uh, through most of my OD uh, career as well, because I have heard their name. So there again, like you're seeing examples of these strong women really get to shine and show their growth potential in the space and inspire other women to know we can all be successful in this too. So again, and then of course, um, the glue, one of the, the central glue elements of the OCA, uh, Rebecca, she's, a, I don't know if any of us would be here without her. So, <laughs> so Rebecca, you're there too, uh, is kind of, and I know I'm missing so many, but I just a few examples there of how women are really thriving. So interestingly, I, I'm asking myself, what's the holdup, right? Because clearly there's a talent with women. There's personality traits that really make us succeed. We're, we're seeing strong examples in the Odoo space. We're seeing a little bit in other IT spaces too. But again, I think that there's, if, if we can sort of be a beacon here and find ways to promote women more and more, it's the entire industry is going to um, really thrive from our leadership. So the question that comes to me is, okay, well, why, what is keeping women from doing this? I think that there's something around self perception or limitation in terms of thinking, oh, either it's boring or it's really, really technical or it's too logical. And, and maybe, you know, that sort of logic isn't, doesn't seem as natural of a fit. Um, but whatever, whatever that perception is, we, this is where we have a responsibility because we're seeing it in play. We're seeing it in action. We're seeing the potential of participation here. So it's our responsibility to make sure our message and our experiences are getting back out to the community. So if it is partly that peer support element too, that's where, again, Jessica's example, it, we can support each other, look for our strengths, look for a way where we can grow and be a leader to really inspire others. And then lastly, I kind of mentioned the misconception of the industry, but really giving a true reflection of what life is like and that it is so creative. There's so much opportunity for crashing through into new brand new industries that IT provides. So some action points that Jessica and I thought through um, so these are specific things that each of us can walk away from and do something today to start to really push this idea and be leaders in the IT world and make this a reality of greater participation from women. But find someone in your circle and empower them. They have ideas. They may not have said all of them. They might be thinking something, but were shy or weren't sure. Again, back to kind of that self-perception of like, oh, I don't know if it's good enough. That's a bunch of baloney. So, but sometimes, you know, women in, in the, well, I mean, it, it applies to everybody really, but again, women being potentially careful, extra careful sometimes, pull that out, empower each other to speak and share our ideas. The OCA is a perfect space to do this look for, I mean, I think we kind of do this naturally in our businesses, but do think about, you know, how you can leverage what might be more of a natural tendency with some women you're hiring and how you can turn that into a strength, even though maybe it, it seems like something that might be a holdup because there's too much caution or consideration or whatever, turn it into a strength. They're being thoughtful. They're looking at the situation in a whole, not being rash. This is, this is a good thing in business to be logical and weigh, weigh the intuition with the facts. And then the last point there is, I think, one that could change the world, really. 
back to that perception and that first point that we were talking about with um, the entry point in colleges where there's this sense of, oh gosh, I get to stare at a screen all day or I get to go make pretty pictures. <laughs> and it, 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 there's a sort of visceral reaction to, well, I want the colorful, interesting, creative thing. So it seems a little bit like a shiny object, but in reality, what I think we have to, again, we have a responsibility to make sure that new people coming into the education space, and it could be men or women, but again, like making sure that women are getting this message too, the amount of creativity, the amount of potential in the IT space, and that the Odoo world, the open source world, is a, found, a foundationally great place to start, and we can use this as, as a beacon to change the industry. So that's our collective vision. Thank you for your time, guys. I, um, I hope that you found all the stories as inspirational as I did. Fantastic presentation. And Jen, Jessica, I had expectations, but they were very much exceeded by, uh, and, and again, it's like everything else. When you collaborate, you have a vision of the world. I've got this kind of you know color in my glasses, but I don't see it through someone else's eyes. And I had, uh, personally, I didn't also have any idea about that challenge that Jessica had worked through. I'm glad that you two were able to mentor each other and work on that. We don't have any um, questions in Discord or uh, or anywhere else, but we did have Rebecca did join us and during your during your okay. so <laughs> I just want to really send a shout out to Rebecca because this has been an enormous, enormous difficult challenge for her and Graham and all of the OCA board to organize this. And it's been a very successful two days of OCA. I just want to thank Rebecca Galatly and everybody, all the presenters are ready that's done this. So um, uh, any other comments, like we kind of at the tail end of Daniel's, we said, is there anything you thought of, you know, as you gave your presentation that you missed or, or that we uh, didn't cover that you just, as you're going through, you thought, oh, I should have, I should have said this. Uh, and just want to give you one more shout out because we've got Wolfgang teed up to do our final, uh, this uh, presentation on, on open source and Odoo for nonprofit. Any other final parting wisdom? I think words I just wisdom really counsel? encourage everyone to, to find the one key action is the thing that Jen and I were really talking about is what can we do to help create more diversity. And so we'd love to hear additional ideas or take a step and share what if you did make an action, how did that impact your work or your personal life? It would be awesome to hear about. Absolutely. Yeah, I, I found the same thing that you found, which was, I, I don't know if it's politically correct to mention, I'm going to actually make um, Rebecca uh, join us if she wants to chime in. And so oh, yes, I, I, think from, I don't know if it's politically correct to mention like an evil empire company like Salesforce, where I used to be in the Salesforce world for many years before I came to Odoo. But I would go to Dreamforce, and it was great because Salesforce has a trailhead and a lot of encouragement for diversity. Like you say, a lot of uh, female and uh, and you know other uh, folks from different groups that just could could start. They could get trained, and that is the cool thing about Odoo and the OCA that you can start making code and putting it on GitHub and sharing it with each other and learning and contributing from wherever you are. And and it's a very supportive, collaborative team. Rebecca, did you have any comments for us? I don't know if you want to say anything. I'll just unmute myself. Um, it's it's very early. Well, it's not very early. It's only seven a.m. in the morning here. Um, but uh, I've yeah, it's interesting having. I mean, the software development um, and all IT is obviously male dominated. But um, I've found nothing but support, um, even from um, my male colleagues. Um, but it is it's noticeable at. Um, things like especially Odoo experience and that sort of thing. But the women stick together. We come and talk, as you were talking earlier on, Jen, about um, Anna Jurasti, I always say it wrong. Um, you know, she's wonderful. She's a powerhouse. She comes in and everybody knows her. And um, I've over the time, the two Odoo experiences that I've actually been to, I have seen women come to her and ask her for support, ask her for guidance, um, where I feel they're much more comfortable to come to her um, rather than necessarily the male dominated, and they do, and I've heard them say to her, "Look, I've been watching, I've been following you for a couple of years now, and I just couldn't wait to meet you and have the chance to have a chat and have that one-on-one um, -on -one with you." So, as you say, if there are women around you that you can find to help mentor um, you, they are willing as well. That's the whole thing: is that nurture and that um, care. It, it comes through quite clearly, um, and we get things done. So, <laughs> so it's a wonderful <laughs> thing. 
<laughs> well, and also, you know, Rebecca, you're a mother, uh, Jen's a mother. You, it's classic. You're doing a lot of multitasking sometimes. I mean, you and I have had conference calls where your sweet little six-year-old uh, yeah. is right there. So, I mean, nobody... She's uh, we all have mothers. as well this morning. Yeah, <laughs> early Saturday morning. She's like, Mom, what are we doing? And just we have one minute yeah. before we'll take um, presentation. And we did get a question. Virginie was very active yesterday. She's in Belgium. Mm -hmm. And she asked a lot of great questions uh, during one of the presentations yesterday on Odoo Migration. So she has a question of, do you have in your company women doing code development and men doing customer relation management gathering requirements? Uh, I, I, of course, in our company, Open Source Integrators, I'm a man working on customer relationship management and gathering requirements, and we do have women doing code development. Would you either uh, Jen or Jessica like to have an answer on that? Well, um, <laughs> I think that there, again, with the code development piece in particular, um, again, it's all about helping to understand the creative opportunity there um, because I think again there's it comes back on a perception where it feels like oh, okay I'm going to be staring at code all day but in actuality it's it's you know women have this exceptionally strong I mean we all do but it's it's equally strong in women this um, logical problem solving kind of detail oriented being able to trace through and make connections um, of different things so I, I really feel like, again, it's about making sure women understand what it really is to code. And, and same thing with like coding in the, in the, OC, the OD world, how interconnected it is and how community-based it is. So um, I, I, we, do, we have some um, examples of that at, at OSI. I'd love to see even that grow even stronger within OSI and within the OCA as well. I think uh, that it's a, again, the perfect, uh, like this, this ground, this, um, uh, you know, this field of, of where that's just ripe and fertile and ready to grow. And it's just a matter of putting some seeds there and then, and nurturing it really. So, and again, I think I appreciate everyone's input because it is about taking action today to really make that perception correct. Awesome, Jen. Thank you for that. It's a terrific way to end this. And my biggest takeaway was what you said about, I went into graphic design because I want to be creative and artistic and found way more ability to really impact companies. I feel like what we're doing with Odoo is we're helping to save jobs. And this time when so many jobs are, are being cut, the automation and the improvements we can do in functionality support the users to what, to, to Jessica's point, is so critical. Yeah, absolutely. We're going to introduce Wolfgang, but before that, I just have to tell a quick story. In my previous life, I worked for a Salesforce consulting firm and we were contacted by a woman who was a mom, homeschooling mom, and she wanted to teach her kid how to code. So she got on Code Academy, and the kid just was not motivated. Son was not motivated to learn to code. She, however, created a whole entire homeschool, homework tracking, just this awesome module. And we were so impressed with that that we brought her into our training program. And in six weeks, we got her certified on Salesforce. She became a junior project manager, just exactly like what you did, Jen. Rose through the ranks in project management from just you know self-initiative and self-study and support of teammates. So... Excellent messages.